At Celerant, we're excited to announce the latest version of Cumulus Retail is now available, version 266. The new version includes new features, enhancements, and integrations, and the full release notes can be downloaded via your client portal. In addition to Cumulus 266, we also recently announced several new vendor integrations that are specific for the outdoor sporting goods space. These integrations are not version specific, so what that means is you can add those onto your Cumulus system at any time. Those vendors include Rothko, Second Amendment Wholesale, and Big Rock Sports. But in today's video, we wanted to take a few minutes to show you some of the most exciting new features that are now available within Cumulus Retail version 266. First, we're going to take a look at the frequent buyer program in Cumulus Retail. This program is a, an optional add-on for Cumulus Retail. Uh, this is geared towards retailers who want to offer incentives to their customers, such as buy uh, X number of items over a course of a period and earn a reward. Um, so for example, buy 12 of something, get the 13th one free. Um, so in order to start this, we're going to take a look at the Cumulus Retail back office. That's going to be where you handle the setup side of things. So we go under customers and then we'll go down to up to the setup and then we'll find the membership coupon templates. What this does is this allows you to create a coupon template that is going to use. We actually will, um, when a customer earns the reward, then we will actually use this template to generate a coupon, which gives us a lot of flexibility. Um, that then they can redeem that coupon either that day if it's eligible or at a later time if they if you want to set it up that way. So you can see here I have a coupon template set up already. Uh, this just gives us a way of being able to set up that coupon. Again, this is used uh, in order to generate a unique coupon. Um, that's where the barcode comes into play. We will actually jumble up these characters uh, and, and create a serialized coupon number essentially. Uh, you also have the nice feature of being able to say, you know, if you earn it, say today, it might not be uh, valid for use until one or two or even three days down the road. Um, if you have it set to zero, then it's available to use right away. And you can also set it to expire after so many days. Um, so once you have the coupon template set up, the next step is to actually link that coupon template to the frequent buyer program. To do this, you would go under promotions and markdowns from the back office, and you will go down to frequent buyer program. Once you have the, you can see here, I have one set up already. You can create new or you can edit. I'm gonna go ahead and edit this existing one. You can see here that this is where you would set up the description. This is where you would link the coupon template we just created. And then you can define the quantity needed, stores, the activation date, deactivation date. If you wanna have any type of text um, on the coupon receipt print. So for example, for every 12 items you purchase, you earn one item free. And then you have this advanced filtering where you can sit there and uh, use various filtering options, uh, in which case you can define that this is set up for only items that are under the Taste of the Wild brand. So from the point of sale, the process will go, you, you can add the customer to the sale. So in this case, add them by their last name. And then I can go in and scan in the items that are, are eligible for the frequent buyer program. We'll add the item. We make the sale of the item. And then we can co continue to click on pay. So give us our pay screen. We'll go ahead and select the desired tender. And pay, and finish the sale. And then we'll get prompted if to have the green receipt, in which case you can either print it, email it, both, or if you don't need a receipt, you can always click on no print. Go ahead and click on no print. And that completes the sale. So at this point, what happened behind the scenes is the customer is now enrolled in the frequent buyer program and has earned one punch, if you will, towards that reward. So if I come back in and look at the customer again, and I can configure my my point of sale uh, through the POS designer to add this frequent buyer account button. In which case I can go through and I can see here, this is the frequent buyer program so that this customer is enrolled in. Happens to be the Taste of Wild. They've already purchased two of the item. They need 12 of the item. 
uh, and then it shows you the activation deactivation date. From here, you can also do adjust the account if you want, or you can view the details. You can view the details, in which case it'll give you the history of what you've purchased, anything that was returned, any adjustments that were made, if there's any eligible coupons out there or earned coupons out there, you have that as well, and then any used coupons or expired coupons. So it gives you a good rundown of uh, the activity of the customer within the frequent buyer program. So once you have the customer entered in, let's say they come in and they're ready to redeem that, that reward, what you can do is you can go ahead and add in the item to the sale, and then using a right nav button that you can get configure through the point of sale designer you can use the available rewards and this can be used to find the coupon and select it in which case you can then apply to the sale and you can see here that it then applied the sale and you can proceed and the customer has redeemed that uh, frequent buyer reward next we're going to take a look at the astro integration in cumulus retail this is geared for pet retailers as an optional add-on the purpose of this integration is to be a seamless uh, way of passing sales data to Astro Loyalty Program and using their frequent buyer program so that the manufacturers can provide the rebates to the pet retailers. So once that's set up, you can simply go into the uh, point of sale and you can add in the customer. Once the customer is added, they can then scan in the item that's being purchased. Once the item is entered into the sale, you can go ahead and click on pay. And what's happening is that you can go ahead and select the tender, go through the pay process. Um, but behind the scenes, what's happening is that the data is actually being sent to Astro uh, Loyalty into their frequent buyer program, uh, in which case it will then add the punches to their, to their customer records, and they'll be earning towards reward. Go into Astro, and we can bring up that same customer. Bring up that customer, and you can see here that they have multiple purchases. Uh, you'll be able to see additional options and history from here. And that's basically the process of using the Astro integration. Uh, once you redeem the, once you get to the point of earning the reward, then the reward will actually automatically be applied to the sale directly in the point of sale. Next, we're going to take a look at the use of the open PLU item as a special order item that can then be. Uh, trans transitions over to a purchase order uh, and print out with the details that you enter in at the point of sale. The purpose of this enhancement is to uh, essentially capture a customer that walks in the store, is looking for something, let's say a pair of shoes um, that you don't have and you don't necessarily want to add the, the rare color to your matrix. Uh, so instead of creating an entirely new item, it allows you to create, use this open PLU item and then create a PO, as you'll see here. So the first step is going to be, the customer comes in and asks for something, let's say a pair of shoes. So I'm gonna go ahead and add in the customer to the sale. Next, I'm going to say, okay, we don't have a pair of shoes, so we're gonna go ahead and bring up the open PLU item. At this point, then, I can sit there and take a look and say, okay, this is, uh, maybe I'm looking at a catalog or something along those lines, and I'm going to change this stuff. Oops. And go through here. And I can even say what color it is, so on and so forth. So at this point, I've defined all the details that I need on this particular item for the sale. And I'm going to go ahead and say what the price is. So maybe it's a uh, $110. Add that. So the item gets added to the, to the sale. Uh, what I'm also going to do is I'm going to change the transaction type to special order. And then I'm going to take it one step further. I'm going to use the comments. And this is actually, you'll see here, it's a nice uh, note to be able to say that, tell me who I need to order from. So at this point, what's happened is that I've created a special order for a customer that's standing right here in front of me, wanting an item that I don't necessarily stock, and I don't want to update or create a new inventory item record in my, my database. So at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and click on pay, and I'm gonna complete the sale.
And I'll go ahead and finish. And we're going to go ahead and click on no print. And the sale is done. The next step is going to be to flip over to the product management or to the back office, in which case now I can go through the vendor management, go under make POs from customer orders. And from here, what I can do is I can do a search based off that item. This will give me the item that I just simply cre created. Again, it was just an open PLU item, so that's why the brand is seller on products and S. But you have the customer, and this is where the comments come into play. You can see that, oh, I need to order from, say, Adidas in this example. So I'm going to go ahead and select it, click on action, make PO. We're going to go ahead and order it from the store or for the store, and then we can find the vendor, in which case I can go in select the vendor, back up, okay. Yes, we'll go ahead and look at it here. And now I have the PO is created. Again, it's still using just a generic item number, this NS item number, this non-stock shoe, for example. Uh, I can go in, I can change the cost. You know, maybe it was uh, $85. And now I can go ahead and save. And if we would print that PO, and zoom in a little bit here. You can see here it has the information such as the brand, the product, the description, the color, even the size that I entered in at the point of sale uh, on the PO printout. So I can then send that over to the vendor. They know exactly what I need to order and I'm not actually updating uh, an existing item or creating a new item for this one-off non-stock type of item. And that takes us through the process of using the open PLU for uh, special order purposes. Next, we're gonna take a look at the use of part numbers in Cumulus Retail. The purpose of this is that uh, some items can actually be uh, brought in from multiple vendors. So the benefit of this is to be able to set up your part numbers um, for a particular vendor, which in which case you can then use for purchase orders and replenishments. In order to use this, you'll go under product management from the back office under products. And then you can bring up the items that you're looking for. And this just gives you control. You can go under edit the item. And from here I can go down, there's a parts tab here. And now I can go in, add in the part numbers for the different vendors. If you have vendor catalog integration, then it can actually it'll bring in the part number record for you automatically. But this allows you to essentially add in additional ones manually if you'd like, or you can go and edit the items. You can set up which one's preferred vendor. You can change the vendor. You can change the part number if they have an update uh, in their part number, or even change the cost. This all comes into play with the purchase order uh, functionality, in which case you can then order it from, say, these vendors, and they will... Uh, populate with the cost associated with the actual part number. Those are just some of the many new features that are now made available to you in the latest version of Celerant software. We encourage all of our Celerant clients to log into your client portal, download the full release notes, review everything that's now available in the latest version, and at your convenience, email updates at to schedule the update for your retail business.